I'm Arnie Gunderson. At Fairwinds, we get numerous questions about Fukushima and nuclear power in general. Someone on our team reads every one of them. This is the first in a series of short videos designed to answer those questions that come in from you, our supporters. I've been getting a bunch of emails about recently released NRC FOIA documents. You know, all the things I've been saying for the last year are turning up in FOIA requests from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They were thinking it. They just weren't telling the public. <laughs> right. You nailed it. The FOIA requests have revealed a lot of interesting information where wasn't one of the documents from the NRC showing that by their calculations, they had already estimated that eight was 18,000 uh, infant deaths had occurred in the USA due to the radiation? Or am I getting that right? I don't remember seeing that one, but there were so many that were terrifying. I've been getting a bunch of emails about recently released NRC FOIA documents. You know, all the things I've been saying for the last year are turning up in FOIA requests from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They were thinking it. They just weren't telling the public. <laughs> right. You nailed it. The FOIA requests. That cover-up is being called Plume Gate. So just search that term if you want to learn more, Plume Gate. Can you begin by telling us what is your understanding of the status, the current status of the situation in Fukushima, and in particular, reactor number four and its spent fuel rod pool? Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head at the beginning of the hour here. The um, um, unit four, is uh, has always been uh, since the very first week or two of the accident in my mind the the biggest concern and, and the the term i used a year ago was that if uh, the unit four fuel pool goes we'll have chernobyl on steroids and 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 i still believe that today the the problem with that pool is that um there's an entire nuclear core's worth of hot fuel and by that i mean physically hot because it just ran and four or five more years of spent fuel, um, the combination means that if it were to go dry, that it would um, burn and liberating enormous amount of radiation. Um, Brookhaven National Lab said that uh, a, a fuel pool fire like could be experienced at, uh, at Fukushima Daiichi 4 would, um, would kill 186,000 people from cancer. Now, so is, that, is that just a fire situation if the, let's say the pool, the, the containment concrete cracks, the water drains out?
out or, or another earthquake happens, it all collapses. Is it, is it a fire that releases that, or is there the possibility of it achieving, again, criticality or a, a meltdown scenario? Uh, no, it can't. Yeah, low and rich fuel, like in a power reactor, has to have water around it to have a fission to, to, you know, for, for a chain reaction to occur. Now, what would happen... Um, if you know what I'm postulating is if there's a if there's a seven seven five earthquake and the pool cracks or the building topples, but let's say the pool cracks, um, the pool runs dry, the zircaloid clad it would become hot enough to burn in air, and and it's called a pyrophoric reaction. The, um, uh, once it starts, you can't put it out by throwing water on it because the, it takes the oxygen out of the water and just gets hotter. You know, in addition to Unit 4, and, and I'm clearly on record as saying both these, uh, Unit 3 is not much better. So there's actually two fuel pools that could um, that, that could cause you know uh, certainly a, the 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 evacuation of Tokyo would be plausible if that pool were to um, uh, were to catch fire. Hasn't the truth already been manipulated so much that we can't really trust the media to tell us the future of what's going on there? Well, I, I, I don't trust the mainstream media. Uh, actually, though, I mean, CNN had me on 20 times, so I probably they've done better than most of the others. Well, now back to Arne Gunnison from Fairwinds.com. Arnie, before the break, I asked you about this figure that's been floating around this 85 times. I guess there's been a calculation of the total amount of, of unspent fuel or partially spent fuel in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility. And that was calculated to be 85 times, roughly 85 times the amount of, of uh, energy released in the Chernobyl accident in, I believe, 1986. Is, is that figure accurate or does it need to be fact-checked? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where they got that. Uh, it, I believe Fukushima is worse than Chernobyl, and, and I'm, I think I can prove that. I think that that number may also include um, the, the possibility of the meltdown of the fuel in the fuel pools, which hasn't occurred yet. I've been getting a bunch of emails about recently released NRC FOIA documents, Freedom of Information Act documents, about the condition of Fukushima Daiichi right after the accident back in 2011. It's clear from those FOIA documents that the NRC believed that a massive problem was occurring not just in the Unit 4 fuel pool, but likely in all of the other fuel pools as well. I think there's two points to be made. After the site began to be more under control, it appeared that those were exaggerations by the NRC. And really, the fuel pools were not as bad as the initial documents led them to believe. So that's the good news.
the, the bad news is, let's look at how authorities responded. In the middle of March, they really believed that they had fuel pools that were in a catastrophic condition. And yet, what did authorities do? They did not evacuate. So I think the message here from these NRC FOIAs is, thank God it wasn't as bad as they imagined. But given what they knew in early March, why the heck did the NRC and the regulators in Japan issue a much wider evacuation? I think it's because they didn't want to frighten the public, but yet they put the public at risk. It was easier to put the public at risk than it was to issue an evacuation and move more people out. Thanks for listening. I'm Arnie Gunnarsson, and I'll keep you informed. Okay, folks, this is Patrick Penry, and I want to give you the message that I got from the NRC FOIA documents. Number one, they proved the world's largest cover-up, multi-agency, to hide the radioactive plume and fallout in the true conditions at Fukushima. Number two, proves TEPCO intentionally discharged radioactive water into the Pacific as early as March 2011. I basically broke and proved that before mainstream media and anyone else. Others, a handful, talked about it, but no one could prove it up until that point. Number three, proves Unit 3 and 4 spent fuel pools ran dry and both had a zirconium fire. A mountain of evidence indicates the fuel rods were a quote-unquote melt on the floor and have been destroyed. Number four, the NRC FOIA documents revealed that the NRC spends millions to search all sectors of media to find who is saying what about nuclear power. Aggressive countermeasures are then taken. Online bloggers are utilized to sway public opinion. Number five. Documents reveal that the DOD, essentially John Q. Taxpayer, paid the bill of $9.6 billion for the Bechtel pumps that Japan didn't want, and I can find no evidence they used them. Number six, reveals the quote-unquote rooftop grabs, which are essentially samples of detected fallout from Fukushima, from U.S. nuclear power plants that NEI, the Nuclear Energy Institute, placed into a password-protected database that only the federal family has access to. And you find that term in these documents quite frequently, the federal family. Number seven, the documents reveal that a Japan earthquake and tsunami drill by the NRC and Japanese utility execs took place as the Fukushima disaster unfolded on March 11, 2011. I'm writing a book about that now. Number eight, the documents reveal evidence that Navy ships were knowingly exposed to radiation levels they should not have been. Number nine, the documents reveal evidence that the U.S. has many non-seismically qualified spent fuel pools. Number ten, the documents reveal evidence that some U.S. nuclear power plants are not prepared for an earthquake, tsunami, co-event of a similar magnitude as the one that affected Fukushima. Okay, and these next two points are what I was able to deduce when I realized that the information in these FOIA documents was being suppressed. Nobody wanted to talk about them. They come out in late June, early July of 2011, silence across the board. Okay, point number 11. As the NRC FOIA documents pertaining to Fukushima began to accumulate into an online public database as early as June 2011, the complete lack of coverage on what is being hailed as the story of our lifetime, a complete lack of coverage in all sectors of media and across all social platforms for over two and a half years clearly proves for all intents and purposes that we, the American public, have no media. Number 12. 
a massive disinformation ring. Remember, Entergy spends millions to convince the public that Indian Point needs to be relicensed. Okay, a lot of money being thrown around. A massive disinformation ring promoting the Unit 4 spent fuel pool offload hoax was uncovered once we learned of the true nature and extent of the damage at Fukushima. Okay, so that's the message of what I got out of these FOIA documents. Okay, and that's all I wanted to say. Patrick Penry, have a great day. Over. We need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.